What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be talking about a rare CZ, the CZ Shadowline Compact. Are you ready? Stand by. What's going on YouTube? So here it is. This is the CZ Shadow Line Compact. You know it's a Shadow Line because it says it right there on the grips. Doesn't say it right there, it just says CZ 75 Compact. However, it does have it right there on the grips so you don't get confused. Um, what this is, is basically the equivalent of like a SP01 Shadow up to, down to an SP01. So if you have a P01, you've got probably 85% of the gun that this gun offers. The single biggest difference between these two is there is no firing pin block. As opposed to what you see when you lock back a P01, you've got a firing pin block. This is my P01 Omega for comparison's sake. So as far as the actual specs are concerned of the gun, it is a double action, single action gun with an aluminum frame. The frame is coated in poly coat. That's a good thing if you like poly coat. It's a bad thing if you don't. It has CZ's traditional slide in frame design comes dressed up with aluminum grips. The grips are pretty grippy, but they're very thin. They don't fill your hand. For me, it's difficult to get a good comfortable grip on. Uh, I like the palm swells better. It helps me tame the recoil a little bit better, but these are serviceable, and if you need good trigger reach, they probably will get it to you. The trigger shape that comes on it is the 85 Combat Trigger. It has an adjustable over-travel stop there, so you can tune in as much over travel or as little as you care for if you get too aggressive and crank this down too far the double action can sometimes hang fire like you'll pull it all the way to the rear and it'll take a second for the hammer to drop so don't get too overzealous on the over travel stop the hammer is a unique design uh, that's only featured on the other shadow line pistols this isn't on the shadows or the regular 75 series the <clears throat> the pull weight is similar to what the other uh, shadow hammers come in at as far as the actual pull weight is concerned uh, the trigger is coming in at, if I had to guess, right around probably 9 pounds in double action. Got a little bit of slack there, and that's how much slack you got. And then the single action trigger breaking right, right around probably 4 pounds. And it's pretty clean. There's not much grit, if any. The sights that it comes with are the traditional uh, competition shadow sights. So you got a fiber optic front and the ramped rear sight. The sight picture they provide. Let's see if we can get that for you on the camera. So it's, it's a good competition style sight. A lot of people like these, including myself, for carry. <clears throat> so uh, another nice feature is if you are a safety fan, there are ambidextrous shadow thin safeties. But it brings us to this side of the pistol. We've got an extended shadow mag release. There it is right there. That's great for competition. I really like this thing. It, Reminded me I probably want it on my carry gun. A lot of people may not like that on their carry gun, but I don't have a problem dumping mags. And probably the weirdest choice, CZ can't get away from making a gun without making one weird choice. For instance, on the old SP01 Shadows, they gave us extended safeties. They made that gun in Ipsic for production division, which is a double action start, so you're always going to start hammer down. But they gave you extended safeties as if you were going to use it in single action. This one, they gave you the thin safeties, which is probably a good thing for a melted carry gun there. But they gave you the traditional 75 slide stop. Uh, you can see the traditional P01 slide stop right there. Just put those differences on the table. Hopefully that's still in frame and we're good. <clears throat> so that is more of an extended. It extends further back. It's a little bit tighter to the frame. I prefer the shape of this. It's what they put on the Shadow 2s. And... <clears throat> No, they've just given us that. Now, the reason this is a big deal is that this fits in PO1 holsters. Now, depending on which Kydex presser you use, they may or may not block off enough to do this or accommodate this slide release. Uh, the gentleman who's letting me borrow this gun, he gave me his A&R Alex and Ryan holster that came with it, or that he got for it, I should say and it has a harder time accommodating it. I've got my JN, JM Custom Kydex outside the waistband too for this, and it 
does a reasonable job. It's not going to let go of it, but it doesn't quite sink in there quite as good as the actual, you heard that, that was a more authoritative, uh, had a little more authority on the snick as it seated in the holster. So it's not going to necessarily fit all of the holsters that you have for the P01 unless you can maybe modify them to accommodate that. The easiest fix for this would just be to buy a P01 slide stop. That is, I wouldn't really modify this gun any honestly other than I would put palm swell grips similar to what Locke is offering or VZ or something like that and I change that out to a P01 slide stop. Uh, the accuracy is tip traditional CZ accuracy. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to shoot a good group today to save my life, and we'll get into that now. All right, here we go with the Shadow Subcompact and try and do a better job on these groups here. These grips are hard to grip, so it's tough to get a good stable shot. That was a good one. Let's try again. Uh, that one went way high. I healed. That one went high again. I healed again. I'm healing. I don't know what's going on today. Again, I'm healing. Dude, I think there's one more in there. I'll just shoot it out. That was really bad. And that's completely shooter related. That's not at all the gun. So we'll load up the P01 Omega. The grips fit a little bit better in my hand. They've got the palm swell. So that's definitely something I would be doing to this. We'll start with hammer down on the P01 for a good group. I've got the green fiber up. Let's see if I can actually get a good grip on this thing and shoot a decent group here. Since I couldn't with the shadow line. That jerked down. I saw that happen. I am not shooting good groups today, gents. <laughs> awesome. Omega. So this is my first attempt with the Shadow Line Compact. Let's see there. So you can see I kind of did all right. This is at 15 yards, but it started getting away from me there and there. It's difficult to hold on to. Uh, contrasting that with my first group with the Omega. Let's see, it was this one. So that is my first group with the Omega. You can see that there. That's not great, but it's not bad for 15 yards and a tiny gun. Um, Try it again. Slow fire. I uh, couldn't really seem to help myself. I was healing a little bit. That was definitely healing. This is probably a little bit of healing. This, this, this ammo might just hit a little bit high, but that's that's pretty good for a carry gun. That's probably not a, not far off from how good I can do with one. And then on the P01 Omega, we had basically stringing down. I was jerking kind of low and left, and then I threw kind of one flyer up here and knocked the targets off the stand. That was amusing. Stick around for the bloopers. So, all in all, the Shadow Line Compact is a very nice pistol. Uh, this pistol is probably not for everyone. That's going to be due to the price. I don't know exactly what it's retailing for, but I think you can get them from CZ Custom. Uh, the number that's standing out in mine, I'll put a number on the screen of what it actually is today, but I believe it's about $1,050. So, who is this gun for? A lot of people are probably going to say, I'd rather have two whatevers for that price, and you're not wrong because as I mentioned, this pistol is probably, or I should say, this pistol which cost about half as much is probably 80% of the pistol that this one is. The trigger is never gonna be quite as nice as this one is and this one is going to be more maintenance free due to the fact that you can remove the firing pin like a 1911 right there with a punch as opposed to the roll pin that retains the firing pin on these so as far as swapping out the firing pin and swapping out the firing pin spring uh, this is going to be a little e bit easier on this gun and that is something you should probably do about every 10,000 rounds it's not terrible you'll be able to dry fire this gun uh, till the cows come home without any major damage other than wearing out the firing pin spring and hammer spring 
However, this gun will always need to use snap caps because you can shatter that roll pin. So as far as the PO1s are concerned, uh, they're just not quite as robust as the shadow line pistols are. So this is going to be a slightly more robust, resilient pistol because it doesn't have that failure point right there with the roll pin. <clears throat> the trigger can be made the same as your competition gun if you were to spend the time doing it. As I mentioned, the trigger is probably nine and four on double action, single action. That's fine with me. I probably wouldn't even modify this trigger. It's very shootable as it is. It's great. As far as recoil is concerned, we'll look at some footage here from the hat cam. I didn't see anything necessarily different about it, but let me know what you see. So we'll show that to you here. So all in all, I think the shadow line is a very cool pistol. I'm very grateful to my friend Alex for letting me borrow it and bring it out here and share it with you guys today. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, all that great stuff. Leave a comment. Uh, would you buy a Shadowline Compact over a traditional PO1 pistol? So let me know, guys. I appreciate your watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.